Some of the most challenging problems in biology today are those concerned with differentiation, the amazing changes by which a fertilized egg becomes transformed into a complete animal. We've learned a lot about embryological development, but work on the purely descriptive aspects has lagged in recent years, uh, largely because the sequence of events which we can piece together from a series of static preparations viewed under a microscope can give us only a limited impression of the complexity of the processes at work. But time-lapse cinematography helps to overcome this difficulty and shows vividly the dynamic nature of the changes which we see. However, not many embryos are suitable subjects because they're either inaccessible or are enclosed within opaque eggshells. We found one insect that we were studying had a very flattened egg, which made it a very good subject for time-lapse studies. This insect is the light brown apple moth, a native pest of fruit in Australia. It lays its eggs in groups of about 200. Each egg is oval and has a sculptured chorion and measures about one millimeter in its greatest diameter. In the film we made, using this equipment, the first three or four hours of development were not photographed because the processes going on can't be seen through the yolk. Before we see the film, I'd like to point out very quickly the main stages in the development of the embryo uh, with a few photographs enlarged from the film. The fertilized egg divides in the cytoplasm several times to produce a number of nuclei which at this stage are not provided with cell membranes, but they migrate to the surface of the egg where cell membranes are formed, and this produces the blastoderm, which is the stage at which the time-lapse film begins. The blastoderm produces a germ band from which the embryo will develop. The germ band becomes circular, then elongates, and the head lobes and the tail lobe curl in towards the ventral aspect. The embryo enlarges, and the legs are formed, and segmentation begins. Later, the eye spot appears, and the caudal end begins a, an extraordinary migration, which we call blastokinesis, around the ventral side of the larva, finally reaching the uh, position near the head, at which stage the head rotates on its longitudinal axis so that the two eye spots move apart. Then, the tracheae fill suddenly with gas. The head is thrust deeper into the yolk, and all of the yolk is ingested and can be seen in the midgut. Following that, the larva emerges from the egg. In the film, you will see the complete embryonic development of a single larva is shown. The film hasn't been cut in any way, so that the entire process can be observed and, if need be, timed with great accuracy. Development of the light brown apple moth occupies six and a half days at 28 degrees centigrade from laying to hatching. In the time-lapse film, one frame was exposed every 32 seconds. With a projection speed of 24 frames per second, the complete development then takes place in 12 and a half minutes. We begin at the stage 
when the blastoderm is being formed. Contractions of the yolk mass mark the instant of cell division, which for a short initial period is synchronous. The numbers at the bottom left corner indicate the age of the embryo in days. The cells on the surface of the yolk give it a ruffled appearance, particularly noticeable on the left of the frame. The cells at the posterior extremity give rise to the serosa, a membrane which can now be seen growing around the margin of the yolk. The two ends of the serosa fuse near the mid-lateral regions of the germ band to the accompaniment of a slight contraction. By 16 hours, the germ band is seen as a broad sheet of cells originating near the left-hand side, the posterior end of the presumptive embryo. The germ band folds under laterally and the yolk mass is pinched in, revealing a clear space separating the serosa from the developing germ band. As growth proceeds, the germ band develops into a cup-shaped object, producing the illusion of a cellular ring. The germ band becomes pear-shaped. The paired cephalic or head lobes and the caudal lobe originate as outgrowths from the anterior and posterior walls. The yolk spheres then appear. Some of the yolk becomes enclosed within the developing embryo, but the greater part of it surrounds the embryo, and this will eventually be eaten. The yolk spheres may move over relatively long distances, often traveling by indirect routes to reach their goals, but they eventually settle into a stable pattern. The serosa has contracted now at 44 hours. It rounds up leaving a space separating it from the chorion. The thoracic legs are developing and the head region enlarges and the embryo begins to take on the appearance of a caterpillar. As the gut becomes differentiated, growth occurs mainly in the ventral region, increasing body curvature so that the cephalic and caudal lobes are brought close together. During the early stages seen so far, the development of the tissue layers is virtually completed. Then, about 49 hours after laying, the first tentative contraction of the embryo is apparent. This is followed several hours later by more vigorous, generalized contractions of the embryo, heralding the initial stages of blastokinesis, the remarkable series of movements by which the larva changes its position within the yolk.
Whatever may be the functions or the mechanisms of these movements, one thing is clear, they're the result of successive muscular movements on the part of the developing embryo. The caudal end gradually turns, and with each major contraction, a slight movement of the caudal end is evident. As each thoracic leg is reached, it's pushed over by the caudal end of the developing embryo. The contractions seem to originate near the prothoracic region. They become more regular, and each occupies about 20 minutes. A total of about 40 contractions is involved in the migration of the caudal end of the embryo. During these 15 hours, the larva doubles in length. An eye spot is now evident 75 hours after laying. Now, the reversion of the larva is complete, and the head rotates round its longitudinal axis so that the two eye spots become visible 88 hours after laying. The heartbeat has now begun, and the embryo is virtually completed. The caudal end is tucked away from the head, and the head is thrust deeper into the yoke. The heartbeat can be seen more clearly now at the caudal flexure. At this stage, a marked change comes over the larva. It becomes relatively quiescent and remains thus for a period of 14 hours. Although no visible changes can be seen, great biochemical changes must be taking place, presumably paving the way for a change to more aerobic respiration, because this phase is terminated by the filling of the trachea with gas. This tracheal filling occurs 117 hours after laying, and it's a very sudden, dramatic event. Filling begins at the thoracic region and is followed by the filling of the trachea around the rectal region. The remaining yolk soon disappears from the midgut. The rate and magnitude of the gut movements and the heartbeat increase so that both appear to be in sustained fibrillation. Eventually, the muscles of the head are completed. As activity increases, the larva prepares to ingest the stored yolk. Rupture of the amnion is indicated by gross head movements, which immediately precede the ingestion of yolk. Yolk passes quickly through the foregut, but it is retained in the midgut. As the midgut fills with yolk, Malpidian tubules begin to function, and excretion into the egg space begins to take place.
The last remaining yolk is ingested rapidly. Periodic swelling of the rectum may be seen as excretion continues. A brief period of relative quiescence follows during which the yolk is slowly digested and disappears from the gut. There's no indication of digestion of the eggshell, nor the larva provided with special equipment to rupture the egg. But it moves its head side to side, and quite suddenly at 160 hours, hatching takes place. Some advantages of the method of time-lapse cinematography will have been obvious. We've seen the dynamic growth of a single larva, and we've clarified some questions of embryonic development and precise timing of the events is now possible and we can view the record time and time again. But a record such as this, like many experiments in biological science, poses more questions than it answers.